will. It's the law at all times. And it's crazy shit continue to be in my mouth. What's going on, my brothers and sisters around the world? I pray everybody is having a blessed day as we give the Lord all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. My title now says, My New Life in Christ. My New Life in Christ. We're going to be going back to uh, Romans chapter 6, dealing with verses 1 through 14. And um, I know we all can say we was lost one point of time in our life. We was out there, you know, things that I used to do. And when you are lost, you are so far away from the Lord. And it might just happen to be somebody looking at this video who's wanting that change. That new life in Christ. A lot of times we just don't want to tell the truth about ourselves. Well, let me be the first to say in this video, well, I'm the only one speaking in this video. <laughs> let me say it like this. I, for one, can tell you I was that lost individual, y'all. The way I was, was brought up, things I saw coming up, things that I've done growing up, I can honestly say in this video, I was a messed up, I was a messed up person. I was, was walking in sin. I was, I was doing my own will at first. I didn't care nothing about the Lord because I wanted to do what JT wanted to do. I loved when I was drunk. I loved when I was, was shaking up. I loved when I was sleeping with women I knew I didn't have no business sleeping with when I was lost. But by the grace of the Lord, I, I never caught no diseases. I'm, I'm still here. I didn't die in this neighborhood when it was so rough and, and didn't get shot, didn't get me. I'm still here. And that was a wake up call for me to, to ask myself, what is my purpose? in this life and when I ran into the Lord the Lord always been there when I had my great wake up call I've never turned back to what I used to do this video is not to condemn nobody this video is to give us another wake up call now let's look at our new life in Christ so we're going to deal with Romans chapter 6 and once again verses 1 through 14. If you have your Bible or if you just want to listen alone, that's foul. So may the Lord bless you. This chapter, my brothers and sisters, this is Paul. And we know how Paul was converted from Saul to Paul. He knew how it was to be on the other side, to persecute Christians, to live the way he wanted to live. But on that Damascus road, that was his greatest change. He was converted over. He saw the light that lowered him down to show him what he really needed to be doing. And from right then, Paul went to work for the Lord, for the kingdom, kingdom building. And once again, this chapter deals with suffocation. It deals with holiness. It deals with being saved from sin. It deals with living a life that's pleasing to the Lord pleasing to the Lord. Now, let's move on. One. It is, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Y'all, I don't know about you, but off that first verse, a long time ago when I read this, I had to pause and say, whoa. Self-check up once again. Because it said, what do we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In other words, shall we continue to walk around her sinning when we know better, when we done came to Christ, when we supposed to be a new creature, born again. I like to say born from above. Do we continue to wallow in sin so grace, we can just use grace and mercy as a license to sin? This is what so many people are doing. I'm not saying everybody. A true child of the king does not practice sin. And let me go ahead and take it because I talk about sin, period, on her. Then I talk about salvation, repentance. Our hearts, right? This is not to condemn nobody. But let me say it like I got to say it in her. When you see this, shall we continue to sin? That shouldn't be a preacher in the pulpit, whoring around, committing adultery. Continuing in sin, practicing sin willfully. 
There shouldn't be no such thing. This is where I'm gonna make a lot of musicians mad and, and, and choir members. There shouldn't be no such thing as a homosexual on the organ. Continuing in sin. Shouldn't be no such thing as a lesbian being your praise team leader. Continuing in sin. Shouldn't be no such thing as a messed up deacon going to church who's home not in order. Continuing in sin. Shouldn't be no such thing as minister of music and musicians hoeing around with the praise team and choir members. Continuing in sin with no repentance. So y'all, y'all, I'm not y'all know I'm not finna come on here and preach no field stuff. I gotta lay it out like the words say and leave it at. If we would truly understand this scripture, we wouldn't be living a life of sin. There be a new life, a new creature. You should be saying, yeah, I used to be a drunk. It wouldn't be no such thing as congregation members sitting out there gossiping and, and not forgiving their brothers and sisters and loving and talking bad about everybody. See, I'm hitting all errors. I'm not going to stop on homosexuals. I love you homosexuals. I love you lesbians. I love you deacons. I love you pastors. I love you whoever you are. I don't embrace sin, but I do embrace the sinner and let you know that you can get it right. All I'm doing is the same thing Jesus done in the Revelation. Repent as he was talking to the churches. Repent. These things Jesus said, these things I have again. you. Repent. Ephesus, y'all have lost y'all first love. It ain't just Ephesus, y'all. It's many churches right now that have lost their first love. Get it back. Get it back. And the only way you're going to get back focus is on Christ. So let's look at verse 2 now. Paul said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? What he's saying is that we died to sin. We can't live like that, no. If that's the case, y'all, then I should still be the same old me. I shouldn't on her. I shouldn't be going to church. I shouldn't be living for the Lord if I was the same old me because that's what I used to do. But see, since any man made in Christ is a new creature, all things, they had to pass on, y'all. And I'm here to tell you in this video, they got to pass on. Let it go. Kill its flesh. Die to it. You got to deny yourself. That's the only way we're going to make it. Can't live like that no more. Verse 3 says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Hmm. And then look at verse 4 and 3 and look at them together. Let's go ahead and read 4. Let me slide down a little bit. 4 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Walk in newness of life. Baptism. The Bible speaks of more than one baptism. A lot of times when people hear baptism, they want to connect it with water. Let me say this, y'all. That's why we get baptized. We recognize it. The death, the burial, the resurrection. We die to all of we, we recognize in the Lord. But the water does not save you. But what Jesus done on the cross, the blood. Ooh, that blood. His life. When he, when he set up there for you and me. For a bunch of messed up folks that wasn't even worth it, y'all. He paid the price that none of us could pay. And by him doing that. We should give our life over and be walking in the newness of life. Therefore, we are buried, chapter, uh, verse 4 says, excuse me. We are buried by baptism unto death. That's why you see a lot of people when they get baptized, they go down in the water. They go down a dry devil and they come up a wet devil. Because a lot of them are not fully delivered. All of us that have been baptized... For me, I only been baptized once. So I, I don't believe in that you got to watch me over and over and over again like the Lord that lost his power. I was baptized once, but I understand why people do it. I'm just talking about me. This is why I walk the walk for Christ. 
when we up and say God can't do this, God can't do that, I don't know if he can deliver me from this. What is that saying about our Lord? Like he don't have the power? No, you just got to believe and, 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 and be willing things. Verse 5 says, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be all in the likeness of his resurrection. Y'all, the Lord that we serve is not dead. He conquered death. We should be also in the likeness of his resurrection. This is why we are waiting to return. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm looking forward to it. 6 says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Woo! Look at verse 6. Look at the end of that. We should not serve sin in the church buildings. Why is it so much sin? See, this is for the church folks also. Mainly for y'all, us. Because there's too many in the building serving sin. Every time you cut on the, the, the internet, every time you go inside a lot of buildings, it's just drama. Passing by the church the other day, the police on the church ground. Holding folks back. You got murder inside of the buildings now. We should not be serving sin. All this committing adultery, playing these games, lying, stealing, cheating, you name it. You got to let it go. Verse 6 says that our old man is crucified with him. Ladies, I'm talking about you also. Man, mankind, let me say. The old you, ladies, should be the old you. If you used to be the, the hoe in the world, fellas, if we used to be the male hoe in the world, if we are delivered, you shouldn't be the hoe in the church or the male hoe in the church. See, once again, y'all, I'm not condemning nobody. But to teach. See, this is why people don't like to deal with Paul talking to the church when it comes to, to getting ourselves right and addressing sin. Too many people got a problem with it. Oh, he judging. No, I'm not judging. I'm rebuking. Big difference. Most people don't understand that. Rebuke out of love and according to the scriptures. That's why I got to take the plank out of my own eye before I try to look in my neighbor's eye. See, I, I have to look in the mirror and, and remember, JT, you got to take yourself first. That's why I'm saying I'm a perfect man, but I don't practice sin. Am I better than you? No. I don't practice sin. Let me say that again. I do not practice sin. I used to. I used to go out with the wrong crowd. I used to get drunk. I used to shack up. I used to do all those other things. I used to. Now that I'm a new creature in Christ, I don't have a will for that no more. Don't even want to. If that was the case, if I if I was the same old me, I'd be hoeing around every day of the week, y'all. Can I keep it real with y'all in this video? I'd be hanging with my boys getting drunk. I'd be just looking ignorant. But now I know better. And I did that song called Once Was Lost. But now I'm found. That song is testimony. Because now I got Jesus. He won't let me down. He had a plan for you and me. We died on Calvary. Verse 7 says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Why we act like we not freed from it? Verse 8 says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. But let me tell you something with this verse. Another powerful verse. If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. You can't, you can't live with Christ in sin. You wonder why Paul also in 1 Corinthians told us about what won't inherit the kingdom. All this stuff that I just named out, that's, this is not my opinion. This is the word of God. Whoremongers, homosexuals, murderers, thieves, liars. You can go on and on and name the list. The Bible plain as day teaches us it will not inherit the kingdom. 
Verse 9 says, Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, died Noah. Death had no more dominant over him. Why? Because Christ conquered death. That's why our Savior is yet alive. Is alive, y'all. Alive and alive and well. Ain't no saying is Jesus going to be put on the cross again. That's over and done with. He conquered death. He died so that you and me might have the right to the tree of life. That we will have life and have it more abundantly. Problem is, too many of us want to be stuck on this life. Verse 10 says, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. He died unto sin once. He already paid the price. We just need to do what we need to do and endure to the end. Verse 11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed into sin, unto sin, excuse me, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And like verse 12 says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. In your mortal body. The Bible teaches us how the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is why, once again, you got to you gotta kill it. You know we live in the flesh, and we know it's not easy. I'll be fooled getting on here saying that, oh, it's easy for me, man. I, I don't have no thoughts. I don't think about doing this and doing it. I'll be lying. I'd be lying. I said I didn't. I, I wasn't looking at that woman that was walking down the street today, and she was beautiful. She had a nice body, and here I am acting all holy. I don't see her now. I'm looking dead at her. It's going through my mind. Lord, forgive me. I said, Lord, Lord, come on, mind. That's what I have to do, because the Holy Spirit convicts me with my thoughts immediately. Straighten up, JT. Because being a single man, and can we keep it real in this video, y'all? Being a single man in ministry is not easy at all. Temptation is always around. And let me throw this out there. When you are married, like a lot of my partners and women and men that's married, temptation is still upon you too, ain't it? Seems like it's even harder when you're married because nowadays people don't care whether you're married or not. They're up to you. They'll get around your home girl. They get around you to get close to your husband. they fellas will do certain things to get your wife. Keeping it real, y'all. You gotta die to that stuff. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't obey the lust. Verse 13 says, Neither hear ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness or sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Instruments of righteousness. When we look around right now thinking about this verse, you don't see too much, too many people that's righteous, do you? Remember Abraham. He said, Lord, if... If you can find somebody righteous, will you not destroy the city? If you can find 50, 40, 30, 20, Lord, if you just find 10, will you not destroy it? The Lord said, I will not destroy it. But the Lord couldn't find 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, couldn't find it. We are living right now in that same thing and most of the wickedness look like it's in the house of the Lord. When he come back he's looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. That go to show you how we need to be right y'all. And as we close the verse 14 it says for sin shall not have dominant over you for ye are not under the law but under grace. What is it going to show you? No matter how young you can kill on. You can't. The greatest command Jesus raised the standard. By talking bad against the law, no. Try to live out the law the best way you can. But the Lord knew it was going to be perfect and we can keep it all. It's too much to keep. 
Because just with a fall is in your mind, little thing that you think you get away with, you don't a whole lot pretty much. You are under grace. But you still live according to the law. Even when you slip up, pet, get it right. Don't keep slipping up. The reason why I'm saying it because I got people that meet on her that's not all the way on, on me. We people on her that's that's some believers that's looking and we thank the Lord for you also looking because if we don't tell the truth once again, we all to be lost. So the new us we should be living for Christ. The new us. The new JT, the new D, the new man, the new P drawings, the new sister Deborah, the new living for the kingdom. All of y'all, the new K. And if you're looking like your old self, you claim be new and nice. Just go to self check up. Go look in that mirror real hard. Follow the young and repent. And say, Lord, I got all that. Put me back on track. I'll up. I don't wanna keep sitting up. I wanna I wanna live for you. Don't like we talked about the other day. Don't be like who? Don't be like demons. And fall back into the world. Live for Christ. The Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Have a wonderful blessed day.